This is KGW News at Noon. Welcome to the News at Noon. I'm Drew Carney, and we start this afternoon with more schools around the area making the move back to distance learning. So the latest update this afternoon comes from the Tiger Tualatin School District, where all middle and high schools will return to distance learning this week. For starters, teachers will have a planning day tomorrow, so no classes at all tomorrow for those kids. Remote learning starts Thursday, and right now it's set to go until next Friday. Again, the plan is to return to in-person learning in the Tiger Tualatin School District on Monday, January 24th. Meanwhile, Hillsboro announced two elementary schools in its district will be closed for the next week. KGW's Pat Doris has more on the changes happening all around the area. Three Portland public high schools stand quiet, closed for the day while teachers prepare for online learning. Students at Cleveland, McDaniel, and Roosevelt High Schools all returning to online learning for at least the week and maybe longer. Ockley Green Middle School students will also return to distance learning. And the entire Park Rose School District is also closed for the day and also moving back to online teaching. It's a total of 7,900 students no longer learning face-to-face. -face. State Schools Director Colt Gill warned late last week that COVID would force this change. The primary reason is that there are too many staff impacted by COVID-19 to be able to operate schools in person. They're either ill or quarantined. This will cause challenges for everyone in that school community. The Salem-Kaiser School District is second largest in the state. It has not gone online. Among its 42,000 students, Salem-Kaiser reports 61 with confirmed positive cases and 30 staff members also positive. Beaverton is the third largest district and reports that among its 39,000 students, 730 are isolated, meaning testing positive or showing symptoms of COVID, and another 581 are quarantined, meaning they had close contact with someone who's positive. The district also has 138 staff who are isolated, which is why the district warned parents it may have to move some schools to online learning soon. There's no specific threshold point. We're taking all these factors into consideration, and it really is going to be um, decided on a school-by-school -school basis. It's not something anyone wants to do. Our top priority is to keep children in school for in-person instruction. Um, that's a lesson we've clearly learned over the last two years, that children do better academically, socially, emotionally when they're here at school. For comparison, Portland, with 49,000 students, is the largest district in the state. It has 813 students isolated, 565 quarantined, along with 165 staff isolated and 72 staff quarantined. Pat Doris, KGW News. Some Vancouver schools are also going back to distance learning because of a bus driver shortage. The impact at schools will rotate having four days of remote learning each week, so this week, Fort Vancouver High School and McLaughlin Middle School are going with distance learning. Next week, it's Columbia River and Skyview High Schools along with Alki, Jason Lee, and Jefferson Middle Schools. Even on remote learning days, though, school cafeterias and libraries will be open if any student needs internet access or just a place to study. They're also offering grab-and-go meals for students to pick up. The district says it hopes to have all students back to in-person learning by next month. We have more information right now about the schedule changes for Portland and Vancouver area schools in an article on our website, KGW.com. Checking in now to the Weather Center, Rodney Hill. Any uh, weather-related changes we should know about? Well, a big change from this morning when we started off with steady rain. As we go through the afternoon, we'll be getting drier and drier, and I'll show you that rainy area basically lifting up to our north. Not much sun today, though. For the most part, it's overcast across the entire state. For the most part, here's Willamette Valley Vineyards on the hill south of Salem, looking off to the uh, west there. And right here, if you look at this, there's that big rain shield that we were under this morning. A closer look shows dry weather in Newport and Salem. Some light showers still around Portland, but again, all of this is continuing to push up to the north. There's a drippy downtown Portland, 44. Still some rain right now out along the Columbia or the Columbia River. Uh, so I think really once we get past the next hour or so, we'll be mainly dry for the afternoon, 51 at noon. So still warming up nicely, 48 degrees at 8 o'clock. Uh, coming up, traveling is pretty good mountain-wise. We'll take a look at passes and also the one area still concerned about getting some hefty rain totals. That's coming up.
All right, we will have more from Rod here in just a few minutes. Back to more local news headlines right now, though. This next story is new this afternoon. Two people are in custody accused of a string of unsuccessful robberies. They were caught this morning after they crashed into another car in North Portland, but their crime spree started in Vancouver. Deputies say two men tried to use a gun to take a woman's purse at a clinic on Northeast 20th Avenue. She actually refused to give up the purse and they left. But deputies say they then tried to rob someone else in the parking garage at Legacy Salmon Creek Hospital just down the road. That person also refused to give them anything, so they headed to Portland, and that's where they crashed their car, hurting the driver in the other car. Police have not released their names. Four Vancouver police officers, meanwhile, are on leave today following the deadly shooting of an armed man last weekend. We can actually see and hear how the situation ended through a neighbor's security camera. Yeah, you hear the shots there. They came after officers say they made several attempts to get the suspect to drop the knives that he was armed with. This happened early Sunday morning, shortly after midnight at Sky Ridge Estates in Northeast Vancouver. Someone called 911 to report that a man was inside their home armed with knives and police believe he may have also started a fire. The person who called 911 and other people in the home, including kids, managed to escape through a window. Officers confronted the man outside the house Authorities say officers used a less lethal weapon at first, hoping to de-escalate the situation, but after that didn't work, officers wound up shooting and killing the man. We spoke. Sad, very sad, especially in our neighborhood here. It's real quiet. We know everybody and so it's a very sad situation. That's a woman who lives in that same neighborhood. No one from the Clark County Sheriff's Office or Vancouver Police Department wanted to go on camera to talk about that shooting that happened over the weekend. The Oregon Capitol will remain open to the public during the 2022 legislative session, which actually starts coming up here in just a few weeks on February 1st. The session will happen virtually, so lawmakers won't be on the floor, but you can still visit the building. Anyone who visits will have to wear a mask and follow other health and safety protocols. <laughs> Alright, who's that young lady right there? Well, she is Oregon's youngest honorary lawmaker, just sworn in today, as a matter of fact. Emery Martin is her name. She's a fifth grader from Pleasant Hill Elementary, which is just outside Eugene. She was elected kid governor by other fifth graders from across the state back in November. Each candidate picks an issue to run on. Emery loves animals, so she drew up a three point plan to help stop animal abuse in Oregon. Bike Town is expanding in Portland. Meanwhile, the city announced its e-bike rental program is entering into more neighborhoods. So anyone who lives farther east and north of downtown will now have access to the bikes here in the coming months. Some of the neighborhoods include Park Rose, St. John's Cathedral Park, Mill Park and Hazelwood. Well, uh, North and East Portland has the least access to affordable quality public transit. And so it's really important that people know that they have access to transportation they can afford in their neighborhood. There's a fee to use the e-bikes, but if you have a Bike Town membership, it costs a little less. There's also a program called Bike Town for All, which allows low income people to get a free membership.